Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. Is it beautiful where you are? Actually gorgeous here where I am. It is sunny, it's warm, but not deadly hot. Making iced coffee. Yeah, you can still sort of hear the ice cubes in there because I decided I deserve to be a little bit cold rather than hot. So today is going to be a fun one. We've got a full house. There's a whole lot of us here today. You know, you've been with us when we go with just a little minimal and then we get everybody. Today, we've got teacher Michelle. She's in here watching Facebook and following along on everything. And then in the studio, live, in person, is Caledonia. Normally she's off site, but she's joining us in person today. Then Parker is here running tech. Not really, actually. Park is, Parker is sitting in the back and eating bonbons. Because today, Ricky is here running tech. And I know the last couple of weeks we have talked about, oh, Ricky is here, and we've never told you who she is. Ricky is joining us as our new camera, video, editor, photography, tech, do everything and help Leanne with weddings too. And so let's do a big shout out, welcome to Ricky. Yay! Yay! And then the big news for you, we're very sad. Parker is moving to Denver. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh, he's moving to the other side of the world as far as I'm concerned. We've known it for a long time, so he's been helping us get everything ready. So we wish him well. And if each of you will send him your love, send him best wishes, and let him know that we want him to stay in touch. He can go to Denver, but he might have to stick with us in the virtual world. He can't really be gone. Once you're a tulip, you're a tulip forever. So that's the news, all the news that's fit to report. Then virtually, we've got Susie on YouTube. Hey, Susie. David's out there, I know. And Teacher Carolyn is with us. I think she's on YouTube and Facebook, kind of popping back and forth. So like I said, there's a bunch of us. And you. So make sure you introduce yourself. Let us know where you're from. Add your tulip. And today, we're celebrating tulips around the world and recapping the TULIP Meetup and a little bit with the AIFD Symposium that we all just came back from. Now, see if I can find my glasses because I have to share. We're doing a recap of the Symposium, which is an international fabulous thing. But right here in Little Portland, Oregon, we were international today. We have certificates going out to TULIPs all over the world. So, Nikki, in Wisconsin, right here in the United States, your certificate's on the way. Jail, Manitoba, Canada, it's on the way. Cecilia, Indonesia, yours will take a little longer to get there, but it's on the way. Tracy, from Antigua in the Caribbean, it's on the way. And Marcel, from St. John's in the U.S. Virgin Islands. All five of you, you've got certificates coming. And I know we had a lot of grading going on. Teacher Carolyn has been crazy busy getting the grading caught up. And so I know once that's all going crazy and caught up, we'll probably have more certificates to get out to you. So exciting times. We're going to start in, and I even made myself some notes to make sure that I remember everything. And we'll be starting with Symposium. Symposium is the American Institute of Floral Designers annual gathering of floral artists from around the world. And I thought I'd kind of work chronologically. And so my first technique that I wanted to share with you was going to be using Curly Willow because when you arrived at the Symposium location, the main entrance was adorned with a forest of curly willow trees. But they weren't done like a tree like this. They were done upside down to give the essence of roots. And then the bottoms were fanned out in a root format and then moss added. Now, Ricky, I think you have a picture of the trees. Can you put that on there? 
That way everybody can see it, and then we'll show how it is done. Whoops, I pulled that off. Good, there we go. Superwoman, there we go. I know, boy. So go ahead and bring it back to me now. So you got to see the trees, and now what I want to do is show you how it's done. I started with a stanchion for like pipe and drape, and then I attached shelf liner. You know, it's kind of that rubbery stuff to keep things from slipping around. I attached that at the top, and then I zip tied it, and I would zip tie it again. And all I'm doing this for is to make sure and conceal all of that silver, because that's going to show out too much, and I don't want that to show. Now, the forest was constructed, designed, planned, conceptualized, all of that by Jenny Thomason, AIFD. And those of you that were at the Floral Design Institute Creative Retreat three years ago got to see Jenny Thomason do a presentation. And if you remember back, she used so much curly willow. It was absolutely amazing. And it was kind of wonderful because the curly willow all came from one of our graduates' flower farms. Linda DePersis chopped down a forest of willow, threw it all into a huge, huge, huge truck, and dropped it off for us. So we had, I don't know, 500 bunches of curly willow. I mean, there was more willow than you can imagine. And Jenny used it to create some beautiful designs. Um, she did like a 12-foot disc, and then she did cocoons that hung in the tree. So we were with her three years ago when she started her Curly Willow adventure. Then when she was doing them this time, she would take entire bunches like this, and then using a zip tie, lash it into place, pulling it taut, and then going back and repeating. So that it gets fuller and wider and zip tie into place. Now, if you did our Tulip Tuesday, you know how to do zip ties because we did a whole Tulip Tuesday just on how to make zip ties work. Because they've got a right side and a wrong side and you want to make sure you get the right side. But you can see how I'm building down. Then she continued with literally hundreds and hundreds of bunches of willow getting it fuller and fuller as she went down until she got to the bottom and then fanned it out across the ground, creating beautiful roots. And it covered a surface area, I would say probably 50 feet long and 20 feet wide. It took her an entire team two days to install because there was so much, but it was exquisite. And you can see just by putting this in, how it starts falling into place. You can go back and add additional bits to make it look fuller. While I zip tie a little bit, what's going on out there? Well, everybody is still chiming in. I've got quite a few tulips so far, though. Uh, Denise, Sherry, Rick, Robin, Drick from Salt Lake, Evangeline, Jim, Scott, Joe, Deb, Carl, Arthur, Gayla, and Amanda so far. And a lot of them were in Vegas with us, so they remember seeing the rooted trees. Much of what was done in Vegas this time was really focused on sustainable and natural design. So that with the willow, it was not necessary to have a water source. So that was a wonderful way to decorate the whole entry because they could just do it up, have everything sitting there ready to go. 
and it lasted the entire week without any issues. Now, as people were looking at things, you would be able to look at all the different arrangements and see a huge variety of ways to enhance the designs, to be able to add water, but to still keep it sustainable. One thing that I found a lot of was the use of water tubes, but it wasn't just normal water tubes. It might be structures with huge vessels that would hold water, and then they would feed it down into the structure, like so, and then you could add water and easily add in flowers that came up into the arrangement so easily. So alternative water sources, alternative foams, alternative armatures, the whole symposium really focused on that. Other things that I saw when it came to the alternatives was a lot of use of bamboo because bam bamboo actually is watertight. So you can use this as a water source. And um, San Francisco City College, held, um, led by Steve Brown and Ginny Tavaracci, did an amazing sustainable design show. And one of the designs was all built with various pieces of bamboo, down to where they had cut little discs and then wove those together it was brilliant and it works as a sustainable everlasting water source as an alternative to traditional foam of course there was a lot of the drilling and using stakes and you've seen this and that was what was kind of fun and if you're a graduate you know um, many of these techniques were already teaching you know the wrapping of the yarn there was so much of that. Using sticks drilled into a board. You've seen this particular board even on several different lives because I've used it um, before and we brought it out in class periodically. Water tubes on a skewer drilled into the board, giving you a water source, giving you a sustainable way of working. That was your Thanksgiving table a couple years ago. It was. Um, I actually flew with probably a dozen of these boards and then when I got there um, wrapped all the water tubes my girlfriends and I would stand and wrap for days and days and days um, if you've done our large-scale class you would recognize this this is a disc that I made using plaster of Paris we've also used it um, with quickcrete so that works just as well and then we have holes that we put into it so that you can take uprights and stand them up and there was quite a bit of structures done in this vertical format so the same thing we've been teaching just implemented in a different scale different materials different interpretation and again sustainable because once you have all these sticks in place you can go back and enhance with tubes add vines add materials to bring in the fresh aspect but all done without the use of foam it was kind of fun to see how many different ways people did interpret floral design using alternative mechanics and alternative ways of doing it. The whole focus was to think beyond today into the new generation. So working with the tubes, working with bamboo, working with wraps, working with sticks, and a lot of that more vertical, upright, narrow, almost a transparent feel as well. So it was pretty fascinating. So any of you that were there, 
if you think of comments about these designs that you witnessed that you'd like to share, I know I'll be going back and reading through the comments and I know all the tulips that are with us would love to hear your thoughts on it. Because sometimes you look at it and you go, ooh, that's kind of weird. Or is it just different and cool and you're not used to it yet? You never know. It's like, oh my gosh. Now, when I first saw Jenny, she was actually making a video of herself with her trees and talking about how her forest worked and such. And I was so excited to see her and we chatted about the creative retreat and blah, blah, blah. Then she went on to compete in the America's Cup with a design competition. And for the first time, when they narrowed it down to the top four, it was four women. Yeah, amazing. Jeannie, Jenna, love Jenna, Jenna, Jenny, can you believe it? Jenna, Jenna, Jenny, and uh, Sandra, ba Sandra, Samantha. Samantha. So Samantha, Jenny, Jean, J Jenna, <laughs> and Jenna. I can hardly get it all in my mouth because they're so overlapping. It was so funny. But Jenny won. Jenny won the America's Cup and she's on her way to Manchester in September of 2023 to compete in the World Cup. And it makes my heart sing. I was like, oh, when David and I picked her for the retreat, we picked a winner. It was so exciting. So, um, Ricky, I think you have a picture of Ginny's arrangement. It was one of hers from the America's Cup competition. Let's show them, because it was beautiful. It was all yellow. They had a timed period to get it done in, and it had to meet certain criteria. And you can't really tell from that photo, but it is about five foot tall. It's huge. And it was done on, I want to say, Wednesday. And when the thing ended on Saturday, it was still beautiful. So it managed to hold really well, which that's kind of exciting too, because that's responsible designing to keep something alive for that long. So back to me, Ricky. Congratulations, Jenny. I'm so excited for you, and um, we'll be rooting for you at the World Cup in Manchester, because that's a pretty big deal. So before I get the next one out, any other questions and what's going on? Just uh, one on the materials that Jenny used in that. Wasn't it tumbleweed? Did she use tumbleweed too? That in the in her final? But that was tumbleweed. Oh yes, 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 yes. I was like, yeah, not in this. I don't know. Oh, no, not in those. No, <laughs> sorry. I was like, oh, I don't understand. Um, but yes, in her very final, that oh, in the final, they had to design on stage in front of a crowd. I was there, and it was just. My heart was just going, oh. But um, yes, I believe she did include tumbleweed in that. I'd forgotten about that. That's, yes. Interesting materials that we just don't think about sometimes. Ah, that is so true. Then the next up, I want to share a picture. After we did the entry, and we talked about that, and I, we saw Jenny, then all of us went to what they called the Partners Showcase. And we were able to set up a table that just showcased the World Design Institute. And if you've got the picture of Pilar and Viviana, shout out to Pilar and Viviana because they helped me decorate the table. That arrangement, um, there's two in the front, one in the back, and then a fourth one that went upstairs to my room that we used for the luncheon. So back to me. But um, they helped decorate all of that, which was so cool. Then there's another picture in there of Yost and Joey. And got it. So Yost is the owner of Flora Abundance and Garden Roses Direct. And Joey is the owner of Alexandra Farms. And they were both there and we kind of collaborated while we were there, back to me, and we'll be doing a bunch of more videos showcasing their flowers. But I wanted to show you one. These are actually leftover. They came to me last Wednesday. So these are seven days old. Yeah. 
and they were for a wedding that I was doing for my niece and these were some of the leftovers and this is a new variety and it's called white cloud and it's truly a white white beautiful rose you can see how gorgeous and super fragrant super long lasting now when we delivered and installed the wedding you know i did these reflex you can see they reflex as well when we delivered and installed the wedding they held so well and it was a hot day it was maybe 80 80 to 85 but even in that outdoor heat the bouquets all stayed gorgeous so um kind of cool there's a design in there of um, the trend focus. Let's look at that. Now this arrangement is one of my favorites. It is one that they used when um, it was Keith White doing a whole presentation on design trends. And if you look really closely at that, see the colors on the bottom? Those are all post-it notes. So it was just a plain vessel that Keith covered with post-it notes to get that color in there. And then when you look at the flowers themselves, he was spotlighting a lot of beautiful blousey blooms. So go ahead and come back to me. But um, so he had a lot of garden roses in there. He had a lot of peonies in there, ranunculus, a lot of really multiple petaled blousey fabulous blooms. But at least half of that is artificial. Yeah. They were permanent botanicals. They weren't fresh. And we have so many great things now available to us in the artificial standpoint. So like this Phalaenopsis is real, this one isn't. And you could hardly even tell. How cool is that? So when you're designing and you can't get something, supply chain interruption, it's important to think about, okay, what alternatives do I have? Maybe your design doesn't call for post-it notes, but maybe it calls for faux peonies or faux orchids. Now, luckily with Garden Roses Direct and Alexander Farms, you can pretty much count on getting your garden roses, but there may be a day you can't get the color you really want for some reason or another, and that's where having the faux can really be your saving grace. Absolutely fabulous. Now, I think there is um, an arrangement or a, a picture of Rose Study. This is one of our tulips, and Rose worked the entire symposium behind the scenes, and she was so fortunate because she got to work side by side with some of the key designers. Pull up the picture of Passion Flower Sue's arrangements, and Rose was able to work with Sue McClary, and Sue McClary, if you're familiar with her, does wearables, flowers on your head, bouquets to carry, flowers over the shoulder, the um, tattoo style corsage, all the things that we also teach in the online flowers to wear wedding workshop. So um, in fact, Susie Caledonia put that link in there, that flowers to wear, because that's where we cover all of that. And then Ricky, if you'll bring the camera back to me, yeah. Uh, when you looked at those pictures, uh, the yellow one, some of them are easy to tell what they were. Uh, those were callas, but the purple one is misleading because you immediately think that it is hyacinth, but it's not. The purple headdress and bouquet was all individual agapanthus buds. Yeah. And so I wanted you to see a lot of what Sue McClary does is take a product and then deconstruct it so that it's still the same product, but it doesn't look like Agapanthus. Instead, she takes each and every single bloom 
and then reconstructs to build her fantasy flower and that's where you see the headdresses and such. And Rose Study was able to work on that with her and what an opportunity to learn the mechanics and to understand. Now, she worked from early in the morning till late at night. She was one, one, one busy woman. But, how exciting. So maybe next year you can join us in Chicago and maybe you'll be the one behind the scenes working on the different things, learning all this stuff. Michelle, what's going on? Well, I have to say, we have several tulips popping on saying, we missed you last week. We missed our tulip people. Not having FaceTime with us. Fade you know, not FaceTime, but right, FaceTime. Right, but no <laughs> FaceTime. Time. You know, we missed you too. And I thought about trying to do it, and it was just so complicated to get the streaming to work and to do it and we opted to stop and instead host the real meetup and do you have the meetup picture because that'll be fun to see yeah. we actually had a live meetup of tulips and it was so fabulous this is just a portion of the group because people were coming early leaving and then coming later leaving and so I think this has about 40 people uh, that was kind of in the middle and it was so wonderful to see tulips in person. Go ahead and bring it back. Um, it was just the greatest joy to actually see people and enjoy lunch together. This is the third time that we've hosted a tulip meetup and we'll be doing it again next year. So next year, I think the dates are July 1 through 6 or something like that. Uh, and it is in Chicago next year, so that's the center of the United States, so it might make it easier for you. And I know I've talked to several tulips already that I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. Um, we'll be there. And yes, we'll have a meetup because it's one of the best things. And who knows, maybe next year we'll figure out how to do the live there as well because it was sort of weird not to do the Wednesday live. I know Parker and Ricky were sitting here going, ah, what are we supposed to be doing? <laughs> Except they ended up being Insta florists because that was the day that all my flowers arrived for the wedding. So they ended up helping Hitomi get thousands of blooms prepped and in water so that Thursday when I arrived we could start designing. So that was pretty cool. Oh, yes. We have a first timer. Her name is Mila and she's from Romania but she lives in the UK now and she just loves watching your videos. Tell me her name again. Mila. M -E Mila. A. Mila, first timer. So all of you tulips, welcome Mila. Make her feel loved. If there's any more first-timers out there, introduce yourself. Get to know each other. Let us know where you're from because tulips are inclusive. Tulips are collaborative. Tulips are better together. And so we love to grow. If you know somebody who should be with us on this video, tag them, share it out, spread the love. That makes me happy too because I want to have as many people involved with this as possible so that they can be part of the flower world. You know, it's a pretty great place to be, don't you think? I mean, flower people are good people. That's what I'm always reminded every time we get together with these events is flower people are good people and it makes it so nice to spend time together. Now, the theme for the symposium was roots. And if you scroll back through the um, Floral Design Institute Facebook page, you'll find that there is a tattoo of roots that Ricky and Parker actually photoshopped onto Barbie so that Barbie had some tat art um, and was able to be part of the whole tattoo program. It was very fun. But many of the designers, as they were working, like Jenny with her rooted trees uh, and others that included roots in their work, they just incorporated it as an overall. So I had some roots from an orchid plant and I thought, ooh, I'm going to grab that and work it into this design. So it's just a plant 
that has no more blooms anymore, so it's just the plant and the roots. And I cleaned it off. And then I've got just a bit of black bullion wire that I have twisted so I have multiple layers. And I'm bringing it around and just securing it to the plant. Then one of the things that I found in a lot of the designs that was a common theme was a strong focus on form. And the two forms that I saw the most was a very vertical rectangular, ooh, vertical rectangle, and the other was round. And so this design is basically a, um, a knockoff, a copy, a smaller version of a round design that they had there that was exquisite. Did I have that structure picture? Yeah. Excellent. I didn't remember if I gave you that one. So this was the inspiration uh, that was on site. And you can see the form is there and it's translucent in that there are flowers on the inside that you have to look in to see. Okay, back to me. So that's what we're going to be duplicating here. So the form I've got is a pre-made structure that we just got at our floral wholesaler. It was natural in color originally, and we painted it black. You may have seen this before, because we've used it before. Then I just feed in the bullion wire so that I can get it to twist around capture it here. I need littler fingers. While I'm working on this, anything else going on in there? Um, Leanne, there was a question if those are water tubes that are there also, and are they attached with um, the bullion wire as well? Yes, um, I have three water tubes already attached to this so that I didn't have to do it on camera and I attach them with bullion wire and U-glue. So that the U-glue keeps it from twisting and then the bullion wire makes it extra stable. Then they too are painted black so that they just disappear in. There we go, I think I've almost got this. It's kind of tangled. Let's get that cleaned out. There we go. And around. How did we live before U-glue dashes? <laughs> You know, that's so funny because at the wedding even uh, on Saturday, the tablecloths were, it was super windy. It was so windy. And the tablecloths were all blowing up into the air. And we, of course, didn't want the tablecloths blowing up into the air. We wanted the skirts to be down to the ground to look so elegant. And so I'm using you glue to glue the tablecloths to the grass. It was so funny. I was like, I can't believe I'm doing this. But it worked, and I just glued it down to the grass, and they kept them from glow, grow, uh, blowing up and around. So it worked, but oh my gosh. I always have you glue in my purse. I actually keep it in my wallet, and so if I have my driver's license, I have you glue. Uh, and so it's just always with me. Then I also have it in the glove box of my car. Uh, and I think I usually have some in David's pocket too, because you know, you can never have too much U glue. So I've got that now fastened and letting it just trail. Then I can fill my tubes with water. And the, I'm using, this is actually called a test tube filler. You buy it at a science store just Google test tube filler, they come up and everybody else says, oh, where'd you get that? And it is just a test tube filler, no big deal. Okay. So I put those in. Now one of the tubes I secured on the inside and that way, as I go with my orchids, I can take the smallest one and actually feed it through very gently because I want to I've got a little hole here I can fit it through without damaging it and then down into the tube come out come out so now it peeks out from the inside just adding that little bit of color pulling your eye through 
so that it capitalizes on the transparency. Then I can come back with another stem, giving it a cut, determine how long I need it, placing it in, and then again using a little bit of bullion wire. Leanne, are those orchids color enhanced? No, aren't these orchids beautiful? These orchids are 100% natural, and they actually were just cut off this plant today. It's the same plant that I got the roots from, but I didn't want the, the orchid on the plant. I could have, but then I couldn't have shown you the water tube thing. So um, I could have just denuded this and set the plant in and done it that way too. That would have been cool, but I wanted to definitely have the tubes used so um, it is just their natural coloration and I'm going to secure it here so that it doesn't wiggle around on me because I want it to stay put. And you'll find in this newer form of design more and more is on structural stability. So using water tubes and then wiring and locking and armaturing and adjusting things into place so that it goes exactly where you want it to be. It's kind of interesting how design is evolving. And then maybe another one, just a little bit lower. Locking it in. Would you need water tubes with orchids or would they be okay to use with no water source? You know, you could do them for an event or a party with no water source, but I would encourage you to use a water tube because with a tube, this is actually going to last two weeks, maybe more, whereas without a water source, they're not going to last as long. Caledonia, what you got over there? Since the orchid's an air plant, if you spray the roots, won't the plant stay alive? Yes, yes. So, um, as Caledonia mentioned, an orchid is an air plant, it's an epiphyte, and so if you had left it, I had left it on the plant, then I could have just kept watering the roots with a mister and had maybe a month out of this. But I was trying to use my little water tubes to show you the technique, and so sometimes I do things for technique, sometimes I do it for reality, this time it was for technique, but yes, if I did it with just leaving the orchids on the plant and then maybe did something else on the inside to get that transparency, this could just be misted and stay in your home for so long and it would be just amazing and fabulous. Now, another thing that was very, very, very popular as um, I was going through and looking at the different arrangements was the wrapping of yarn and you all have seen that before in fact you might recognize this particular wrap yarn from teacher Michelle's live that she did a few weeks ago um, and I thought that color with the orchids was exquisite and gives me some dynamic line to adjust to make it look more interesting, adding texture, and it even picks up the feel of the roots, bringing it up to the top. So now I've got texture, I've got unity, I've got rhythm and movement. <laughs> Catherine says, copying this spectacular design. I hope you do. You know, that's one of the reasons I love AIFD is I learn so many creative techniques that then I can reimagine with my own style and come out with something totally different. You know, it's, we all need inspiration from different things. Now, once I get this set, then next, you'll love this, Oh my gosh. Beading was a very popular thing that I saw over and over and over. 
And it's nothing new. Back in 2011, when David and I um, were the chairs of the symposium in San Francisco, Uni Seppanen um, from Finland, I believe, did amazing headdresses with beaded hypericum where literally he had people sit and bead hypericum for three days. Can you imagine doing that? Poor Parker and Caledonia mm -hmm. beaded for three hours and they were about ready to quit because they're like, Leanne, we hate you, we hate you. And I get it because it is kind of boring. But look at that color. Doesn't that add impact? So if I take this now and add this in, I'm just going to wind it around and secure it to itself, locking it, and then letting it drape. And I want it to go behind this one because I want these various levels so that it goes behind and above and under and over. And then to create even greater depth, I'll turn it so you can see the back side, bringing yet another piece and securing them together because this will turn this into a two-sided arrangement. And I can even feed it through here. What's your mechanic? That's my secret. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, the mechanics are actually amazingly easy. So, um, bullion wire, okay using a needle because bullion wire isn't strong enough to pierce through. So Parker put the bullion wire through a needle and then just strung the beads all on on the needle so that it all just hooks together. I'm going to go ahead and twist this to make this strand longer. And then you either need to fasten off the bottom end or using your Oasis Flow adhesive, glue that bottom one so it doesn't slide off. Then the other tip that you want to be a little cautious of is they will dehydrate as they sit. So you need to shove them up as tight as you possibly can so that as they dehydrate, they still stay together. Um, otherwise, you'll get them flopping around back and forth. So if you're doing it for the moment like we are today, I wasn't too concerned about that. But if you um, are going to have it for two or three days, you've got to make sure they're really jammed together. Uh, and then if it's going to be where they're up close and personal really looking at it, you've got to re really analyze the size of every single berry and line them up in a good format because all of a sudden you can see if they go so you want them to be a little bit more controlled. It's all kind of fascinating. It seems like, oh well yeah, I'm just stringing something, but just stringing something is actually more complicated than you realize because if you string it wrong, it's really, really, really wrong. Um, and it's kind of like those Pinterest fails that you see, it's that same type of thing. It's like, well, yes, anybody can do that, and yes, it's beautiful, but you know what? If it's wrong, it's just wrong. So this was not a Pinterest fail, so thank you, Parker and Caledonia, for humoring me in doing <laughs> this, because I know it was a lot of work, and it wasn't the most favorite thing you could have done today, but it was a necessary thing, and I appreciate it. Yeah, Michelle. Well, Trish is pointing out that FBI is way ahead of the curve. She says, it's funny how some of the new techniques displayed at symposium I've seen in the FBI video library. You know, in fact, it's funny because there was so much of this yarn wrapping 
And if you go to the Flower Lovers Club in the Technique Library, we've got the yarn wrapping in there. And um, if you go to the slideshow that Teresa, Teresa, teacher Marisa did a short time ago with the necklace, she's got a whole thing in the Flower Lovers Club about how to bead Hypericum correctly, which is why Parker could do it so well, because he filmed her doing it. So he'd already had the lesson. <laughs> um, but yes, it's true. I do like to believe we work really hard to stay ahead of the curve and at the same time you can always learn more which is why we go to symposium to make sure that we keep our skills current and new because we get so much inspiration from other people so this would be that transparency seeing in the form, the round, wrapping, using a lot of dynamic movement, incorporating the theme, beading, so so many different things that we saw there all encapsulated in one. So that's kind of a fun one. Now, how many bunches? Well, I haven't used them all. You can see I still have some over here, but they beaded nine bunches of Hypericum. Yeah, because I bought 10 and I saved one right here so that I could talk about it. Um, when you are beating, you want to go through and you just pop off the bead so that you don't have any of the green and you just pop, pop, pop and you do all that and then needle in with the bullion wire and you're set. So very easy but time consuming. So just because it's easy doesn't mean inexpensive because nine bunches of Hypericum. Now this was probably three bunches on that one, but still three bunches of Hypericum, you're into it $25 maybe. And so by the time you mark that up, it's, it's a work of art. Um, Hypericum dries okay but it's not gonna dry like forever. Uh, so this is gonna be pretty for a couple of weeks maybe, and then it's in the compost heap, so. <laughs> so Leanne, Olga is on YouTube today, and she has a birthday tomorrow and her 34th wedding anniversary. Birthday and 34th, congratulations. So you got married on your birthday. See, I don't think that's very wise because now you only get one celebration. Not wise at all. But after 34 years, you can celebrate as many days as you want, so it's okay. Uh, but I've always figured, you know what, you don't wanna get married on a holiday or your birthday or something like that because you wanna be able to have as many celebrations as you possibly can. But congratulations, happy birthday, happy anniversary, and glad you joined us today. Now, I actually made myself notes because there were so many things that I wanted to make sure I didn't mention. So I'm gonna look here real quick, make sure I'm not skipping something. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We have a picture of Kim. So when we did our tulip luncheon, Kim couldn't come for symposium because she had weddings and work to do. So she actually flew in from Colorado just for the day to have lunch with the tulips. I mean, how cool is that? So bring it on back, so that's good. That was pretty darn exciting. So Kim, it was so great to meet you in real life and I'm so glad you could come join us. And I'm honored that you flew across the country to come join the tulips. It was pretty fabulous. Then we've got another picture there of the tulips that were inducted into AIFD. Now, this isn't all of them. We actually had 14 inductees this year. Yeah, 14 tulips were inducted into AIFD. That's pretty darn exciting. So kudos to them and congratulations. I think that um, it's pretty darn thrilling that you did that. So, okay, let's go on. I've got another one I want to show. And um, 
this is a structure and do, does the whole thing show? Okay, cool. So then uh, if, if you have done other things with us, like Lansu Ninth Moon, you would have known this piece. This was actually designed by Greg Lum, AIFD. He's in San Francisco, and he used this for his installation at the garden one year. And then when he flew back home to San Francisco, left it with me. And I thought, how funny that, I don't know, three or four years ago, he did this with all the yarn. And this year at Symposium, yarn was the big thing. Notice the color, even matches. How cool is that? So I cornered this because I thought this just goes perfectly. We need this. And then we put Ricky to work because I needed all this stuff. And so she, while, Hyper, while um, Parker was doing Hypericum, she started doing chrysanthemums. And it's button chrysanthemums. And I'm just going to hook this on here because it's the easiest way to, to just hold it into place. But you can see she beaded nine bunches of chrysanthemums. And then we can take them and we can do it a number of different ways. We could just drape it over like so creating some depth. See how that drops it behind so that it creates movement front to back and then repeating that. Oh my gosh, they're kind of stinky in here. It smells like chrysanthemums. <laughs> it looks fantastic on camera. Does it? it oh does. good, I was hoping it would. It doesn't even read as green. It reads as almost black and white, or black and um, yellow. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, fun. Fun, fun. So you can see how just adjusting, moving it around, and then coming back with more of the hypericum, because this gives it that alternate yellow color, adjusting the hue. I'm going to secure this because I want to kind of hide that hook and letting it drape down. Now it's interesting if you've ever done East Indian weddings, the mandap oftentimes has so many garlands and such. Many times it's marigolds, but it can be carnations or roses or chrysanthemums or hypericum berries. It can be anything. Um, and it gives you such a beautiful look. If I can get that to stay there. There we go. And now, again, all of these are done on that bouillon wire with a needle, because that's just about the easiest way to ensure that it works. And then I can bring it up and over so that I get the depth going on. And if I want it longer, I just take and secure a couple together. So Leanne, Trish said she was most excited to meet you in person, and she wondered who you were excited to see again in person. You know, it's funny because um, different people for different reasons. Uh, I'm always thrilled when I get to get together with Phil Reloda and Kathy Hill and Reloda because I feel like he is an icon in the world. Ralph Null, an amazing gentleman, um, obviously retired and not doing as much flower work now, but has had such impact on the industry and I can remember when I was probably 22, 23, I took a class from him and I was just in awe. My mouth just like, oh my gosh, because his work is beautiful. So I enjoyed that. Then there's so many tulips that I know virtually that I've never met in real life. And so that was very fun to connect with people and actually see who you are and to get to talk to you in person. 
So I would say there was that side of things, the tulip excitement. Um, and then Bart Hassan, who was the World Cup winner three years ago in Philadelphia. And I had been fortunate enough to be there when he won and to watch him work. And he amazed me. He just, he is so skilled and so nice. I mean, he's just a truly nice person. Um, now, if you don't find him to be nice, don't tell me, because my vision of him was very nice, and I want to believe that he's always nice. Uh, but it was very important to me to see his work. And then the one that was high on my list, and I actually got my picture taken with him, and I think it's somewhere in our pictures that Ricky will be putting up in a bit, but um, Dr. Solomon Leong, he um, came and did a presentation called Reincarnation, it was the first time I've ever seen him in person. I've only seen him on video. And I've always been so impressed with his work. And it was so funny because he came to the trade fair with two of his students. It's like, we have to have our picture with you. We watch your videos. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I watch your videos. I want my picture with you. Um, and it was just so much fun. So there was more people than I could even begin to list because it's just such an opportunity to be around people right now. You know, we've been so long since we could be together that it's just a treat. Okay, so now I put that one there. And you can see this is nine, well, six bunches because I used some of the other. Six bunches of Hypericum, nine bunches of Chrysanthemums, and it's really not that much. It takes that many to get it ready. Ricky, you've got some pictures of tulips. Let's put them on there before I do the final touches here. Let's bring some of that up. Plus, it gives me a chance to drink a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. Leanne, with that technique, could you do it with different uh, flower materials, or would it have to be button palms? Could you do it with spiders, or? You know, a good question. Um, what materials could be used? It could be anything that is sturdy. You want something that is going to be able to be without a water source for a little bit. You want something to be strong enough that the needle can go through without shattering. So orchids work out well, carnations work out well, um, hyacinths, agapanthus, uh, tuberose, uh, so anything that gives you a sturdy bloom. Yeah. Are we close to done with those, Ricky? Yeah. Just a couple more. Okay. I'll let you put those in and then we'll go back to this. I can't believe how many people we've got in that room. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So is it back to me? Okay. So another question that you had just asked, I think it was Tricia, said, who did I want to see? Part of symposium is networking. And one of the things that I had on my agenda, and I'd already reached out prior to symposium and said, hi, I'm Leanne. You don't know me, but I really want to meet you. And her name is Sula. And I think you have a picture of Sula's arrangement. Pull that up there. And you can see it is the most beautiful design. Is that not exquisite? I just was so impressed. That's just one of many that Sula does. That's her style. It's so pretty, okay? Um, so I called her, and I'm like, Sula, you don't know me, but I really want to meet you. And so I gave her my phone number, and she got into town, and then she called me, and we met the night of the final America's Cup competition. We were there and we just went out and sat because she has a flower shop in, um, on Vancouver Island, north of Victoria, south of Nanaimo, and she makes that type of arrangement in the compote and such using floral netting and delivers it all day long, week after week after work, week. And you and I both know delivering floral netting compotes is tricky. How do you deliver it? How do you make sure it stays intact? How do you make sure there's still water? And that's all I needed to do. I just wanted to sit down with her. I'm like, how do you do this? 
And so we'll get a live going one of these days and I'll share the delivery tips that she shared with me because she does it as a professional retail florist. And so it can be done. And that's another reason to go to symposium. It's just to meet people like that. Now my last one here um, is just to then take a water tube again, okay, and a little more bullion wire. And when I do bullion wire, I just go multiple strands so that it's thick enough to be secure. And then I can just place this right around the pole, but I didn't make it big enough. Yes, I did. Ha ha ha, that was luck. I almost did it too small, but it worked. And so everything I did here is static, static lines just going straight up and down with all the garlanding. Then filling the water tube with water. Do I need to move this over or is it on camera? Here, fine. Emma, okay. Then taking and adding dynamic movement, letting it cross over changing the whole format of the arrangement by just tucking in and letting it come across. Maybe even let it come forward. And then, yeah, I'm not going to get the far artificial. I'm only going to stick with the fresh one. Coming in with one more and weaving it over and crosswise, getting it into the tube. There we go. And letting it come over. But by bringing in that movement, it changes the dynamics 100%. They're in water, so it's sustainable, it's responsible. This needs to be sprayed down with Crowning Glory. And with it sprayed down with Crowning Glory, it's going to hold for a week, maybe. Yes, they're going to dry. They will dry, they're going to drop, it's going to be dehydrating, but it's going to stay pretty because the yellow chrysanthemums keep their yellow and the hypericum keeps the yellow. Now, this is nothing new. This is what you learn in basic floral design. This is what you learn in advanced floral design. This is what you learn in the wedding courses or the flower lovers club. It's just interpreted a little differently and today we got to share that with you. So thanks for joining me. This has been a grand hour. Next week we'll be back. We've got a surprise. I'm not going to tell you because it's pretty exciting. We're going to have another tulip with us. Um, but this week we looked at all the tulips and we connected with you and I got to share with you things we learned at Symposium. So put it on your calendar. Join us for class so that you learn these things and then see you next year in Chicago. Have a great day. Bye-bye.